what I have for you today and what I've built is the ultimate necromancer build in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Yeah, th there he is, the necromancer. W well, hold on, I just gotta, I just gotta repair some stuff very quickly. There we go, a quick 951,778 gold. And there we go. Let's just go ahead and re key my skills. You know, my necromancer skills. Uh, here we go. We put our corpse explosion on V, of course. Make sure that bone prison stays on B. Obviously, we need iron golem on H. There we go. I'm not going to use life tap and iron maiden right now. That's probably fine. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Obviously, we have our bone armor here, so that we have that additional survivability, getting bone spear from two different places. Yeah, perfect. Y you seem confused, like you still don't get it. Oh, that's why. I forgot. Hold on. There we go. Confuse when struck. That's what we were missing. And our iron golem. Perfect. Now what I have for you is the most expensive necromancer build in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Now let me start off by saying, yes, I know I'm joking, but hear me out. I tried to build something that would allow you to be a leap attack barbarian and actually use corpse explosion as a skill. And then I realized that if you put together enough different skills, you actually can kind of build a necromancer here. So we use Leap for our mobility. We go ahead and cast Bone Prison, which is gonna draw in a ton of monsters. After we kill one, we drop a Grimoire to gain some survivability, as well as our Golem, casting Confuse when he gets hit. And here's the kicker. When you cast your Corpse Explosion with Grimoire on stuff, you actually clear pretty well. It's kind of ridiculous. Now that being said, Obviously, this is players one difficulty. Uh, this is 100% a meme, but I started having some legitimate fun with it. And I just wanted to kind of showcase what you can do if you're willing to mess around with some different types of skills in the game. So for the gear itself, it mostly was revolving around bone hue. Now, when I was first trying to build this out, I made it an ethereal bone hue with a Zod rune in it. And then I remembered that after you use all the charges on corpse explosion, you can't repair it if it's ethereal. Good job, Mac. But you have a massive weapon. Leap attack is going to give you a ton of enhanced damage at its level. This is giving 1510% additional enhanced damage off weapon. So when you take Bone Hue and you throw that bad boy on with two ohms in it to kind of offset the loss of Ethereal, you're going to be swinging around with a 3 to 20,000 leap attack damage. And then on top of that, your AOE is 1400 to 2800, which isn't too bad. And remember, if you haven't seen our video from before, this leap attack AOE actually hits multiple times on the same target if they get knocked back or if they're moving towards you. So then when I was building out the rest of the character, I started off with just a normal run in the mill leap attack barb that was gonna center around using corpse explosion every once in a while. But I realized a couple things. One, you get the bone spear. Well, what else gives you bone spear? Well, that's bone armor. So bone spear on striking from here and also bone armor when struck. It was actually kind of interesting. I was trying to think about what armors to wear and 30 all res with damage reduction along with bone armor when struck and a little bit of additional bone spear when struck. And I thought, you know what? Sure, throw it on. And then once I came to the conclusion that I could use bone hue and bone, I was wondering what other gear could you actually use to make this barbarian both viable and a complete meme. That's where you get Marowak. So Marowak given strength and dex is actually really nice, helps you use the bone hue, and we also max out our strength for maximum enhanced damage off weapon here. But then you have regen mana, which is kind of nice. Leap attack uses a lot of mana. And then you have bone prison. The bone prison is actually really important because like I just said, it's actually going to corral monsters and bring them dragging in. Look at how all of these monsters have already been activated and they're already running towards my character, even though I haven't seen them from off screen. Massive, massive density gets stuck into a single area, which helps our Grim Ward to be maximum efficient, helps the AoE from our Leap Attack to be maximally efficient, and then when you do end up casting Corpse Explosion, the damage is kind of huge, and the density that it affects is also really huge. 
Add on to that, you can throw down Grim Ward for minus 120 enemy physical res, and you are more than doubling your damage coming out from your corpse explosion. Also, that Grim Ward and the Decrepify from our Mercenaries Reaper is going to help with survivability and hopefully having the Iron Golem survive. Now, obviously, we're getting Iron Golem from Metal Grid. Metal Grid is actually really, really solid on any melee character. 450 attack rating plus 35 all res is huge. And then you gain access to Iron Golem. So the problem with Iron Golem right now is that since patch 2.5 hasn't rolled out, it's still very, very buggy. If you haven't seen from the most recent bug changes, they've made it so that Iron Golem is going to be much more consistent at staying alive just due to when gear item checks are done in the game and when you leave and enter games. And since they've already increased the overall AI decision making when the monster needs to teleport to the caster, Iron Golem isn't randomly getting stuck in dying anymore. Now that being said, even with a big bow and battle command, it's really hard to keep an Iron Golem alive. That's why I figured you use something like a dream so he casts Confuse when he gets hit, so monsters end up attacking other stuff. You could also just throw on a massive survivability item. You could also even just make him out of cheap insight rune words. Him dying as an insight rune word doesn't really cost you anything. For the rest of the gear, you do need to put on some reasonable gear to actually have your barbarian stay alive. So we're using a chammed Ariat's face here for the cannot be frozen plus the massive plus skills. Dual Bull Cathos Wedding Ring, a string of ears for a PDR, and then Lava Gout for when you're attacking non-demons, and Laying of Hands for when you are fighting demons. Down in the Charms, just three 2020s, uh, Faster Hit Recovery plus Life Combat Skiller Charms, as well as an Annie and a Torch. On Swap, using Heart of the Oak plus Call to Arms to get the maximum benefit to our Battle Command in Bow that's possible in the game. And what you get is like a pseudo-competent P1 difficulty Elite Sniping build that has some AoE clear potential. You have massive crowd control with being able to leap. Again, the bone prison is going to activate a ton of monsters. And then for wherever a monster becomes physical immune, which actually happens in cows quite often, you have a really decent secondary damage source in the form of Berserk. Berserk is gonna do two to 13,000 magic damage against the target, which when coupled with your three to 20,000 damage from the leap attack, you have two really, really solid options for keeping monsters CC'd, damaged, and ultimately killing even immune monsters as well. Now for the stats that we went with, this was max leap for the synergy, max leap attack for the damage, one point down into Berserk, which is really all you need considering we're going to put a lot of points into battle orders. So you're gonna gain a lot of additional magic damage per level. In combat masteries, obviously maxing out polar mastery and then one point in each of the other masteries. And then the war cry tree, we're actually maxing find potion and then the dump points are going into battle orders. Obviously one point down into battle command, one point down into grim ward. On our swap, that's going to gain us level 16 battle command level 17 after you cast it and then a level 33 battle orders which is going to bring our 1200 life that you can't see beneath me and my 300 mana up to 2500 life and almost 700 mana looking again at our damage so we have 2400 to 13,000 berserk damage and then almost 4k to 20k on leap attack and remember again that the aoe damage 1400 to 2800 you should think of this more as just adding to the minimum damage of your total attack since any monster that would be hit by the leap attack attack swing would also have taken the AoE damage, and very often monsters are taking twice the AoE damage because it doesn't look like it has a next hit delay on it, and the wave travels pretty slowly, so the monster can actually get knocked back into it multiple times. We actually didn't need to put any points into dexterity, but you would put in just enough to be able to wear your items. I put in enough into vitality so that we would have around that 2500 life mark after battle orders, and then the rest dumped into strength. 545 strength here counts as 545 enhanced damage off weapon since we're using a two-handed polearm. Berserk AR around 9,000, Leap Attack AR around 14,000. We have about 4,000 defense on the build itself and obviously super over capped resistances due in part from the massive bonus from Bone as well as the massive bonus from Metal Grid. In our advanced stats we have a smattering of damage reduction as well as 24 life stolen and then we're at the 50 faster hit recovery breakpoint. Also keep in mind that from our Polar Mastery, we're actually going to be critting 31% of the time. So about a third of our attacks are actually going to double this physical damage from the leap attack and also double the magic damage on Berserk. As for the Mercenary, we're using an F Reaper's Toll to be able to apply Decrepify. I've messed around with a couple different things, including Infinity, so we could get that minus enemy fire res for when we're using Corpse Explosion. 
And I think realistically, that's definitely a meme option, but Reaper's Toll is just going to maximize both your survivability, the chance of your Iron Golem surviving, as well as pre-prepping monsters be able to take additional physical damage so that when your Grim Ward comes down after the first kill, you basically have a continuous source of minus enemy physical resistances. Also using an Indarials and then a Fortitude, pretty basic kit for the mercenary. Now, just before people ask, why would you max find potion and only put one point into find item as well as Grim Ward? Well, let's take a look at it very quickly. First and foremost, on our swap, so our most plus to skills, we have a 67% chance to find item and we've only put a single point into the skill. This maxes out, even if you max out find item, around 75% chance, so we're really not that far off from the max. But the real benefit here is in the synergy for Grim Ward. So Grim Ward's minus enemy physical resistance is based off the synergy from Find Potion. So while we only have to put one point into Grim Ward to gain access to minus 20% enemy physical res, as well as a near 13 yard radius, that's more than half of the total screen, those synergy points are bringing our minus enemy res up to 120. That makes it stronger than even amplified damage cast by a Necromancer. Now, if I'm being honest, do I think that this thing is like a legit build that you should absolutely go out and play? Well, I mean, if you're trying to have fun, yes. But in reality, I was actually really inspired to revisit this original idea. Again, if you haven't seen the video before, I basically messed around with using stuff like Heart Carver, Black Hand Key to gain access to Grim Ward, as well as using Corpse Explosion from either a Black Flail or Corpse Morn armor to speed up the leveling and kill efficiency for builds like Warcry Barbarian. So let's say you had a low level Warcry Barbarian and you happen to find one of these items, would using the Corpse Explosion actually increase your kill speed? And the answer was yes. Very recently on a Reddit post, I saw people, you know, generally revisiting the same argument that we see a lot of the time, which is buff underused uniques. There's no reason to use some of the worst rune words in the game or uniques in the game. And it made me remember, hey, Bone Hue is a big damage weapon and Leap Attack loves big damage weapons. What else could you do if you are willing to shift away from what the most meta, most efficient build was and actually just have fun in this awesome sandbox that Diablo 2 itemization allows for you? And that's when you get this barbarian cosplaying as a necromancer. Now, if you were legitimately trying to make this build work and you're wondering like what things could you swap out, the biggest problems that I saw the character having was just overall efficiency at anything higher than players one settings, a bit of mobility issues, and and it's not even that Elite Barbarian doesn't get places quickly, actually gets places incredibly quickly. The problem with Leap is that your mercenary and your summons don't attempt to track to you if you don't actually run on the ground. For whatever reason, when you leap away from a mercenary, they will just stay back where they were. And let me highlight that for you. So I'll leave my mini map up so that you can see where my mercenary is right here on the waypoint and I'll just leap away. So I've leaped once and my mercenary is not running towards me. I've leaped away again and my mercenary still isn't running towards me. One last time and I can't even see my mercenary anymore. But if I were to run around in this vicinity, all of a sudden he pops back into range. It's very weird. For whatever reason, this happens on both the mercenary and the iron golem. And I can't really wrap my head around why other than the game isn't recognizing my movement because I'm not forcing them to move with teleport and I'm just changing my X, Y access position, I guess. I honestly am not too sure. But what this comes down to is realistically putting Enigma on the armor would be a really good option here. And if you're going to do that, swapping over to two suicide branches along with Istruns in them and then throwing on something like an Arachnid's Mesh means that you would have the 105 FCR breakpoint. You'd be able to proactively move your Iron Golem out of harm's way as well as repositioning your Mercenary. And one of the other benefits is actually when you cast that Bone Prison, being able to teleport into the middle of it and bring your Mercenary into it is a much, much more efficient way of utilizing that skill. Bring your Mercenary into the Bone Prison would mean that you were able to kill something more quickly and apply Grim Ward. So now all the monsters are being drawn in by the increased proximity of that bone prison aggro are now being hit by terror and that causes a massive amount of clumping. Then after that, you just leap attack onto the target because they're taking more than double their total physical damage because of the Grim Ward. 
pop them one time with corpse explosion and watch the density clear out. Now, if you like the fact that you can legitimately play Diablo 2 as a game where you're not forced to build the most meta build and you can use all of these pretty meme items to some kind of effectiveness, let me know down in the comments. Also consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We're on a massive push right now and people have been coming out in huge support of the channel. We just hit 7K subs, I think, less than a month ago and we're almost at 8k now so just thank you so much i really wanted to take this time to thank you personally thank you so much it means a huge amount to me do you think that there is some room for builds like this would you ever be willing to try the cosplay necromancer barbarian oh and again don't forget from the beginning of the video Using up all of the charges on this gear and then trying to repair it cost almost a million gold. Now that was with also using all of the Iron Maiden charges from here, as well as using all of the Life Tap charges from here. I think without doing that, it was only something like 700,000 gold. So I, I understand, it's super expensive. Almost no one would typically do it. Please, you don't need to at me. I'm already very aware. But I mean, what else are you using all of that gold on? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it entertained you and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.